My next game review is going to be another one on Ricochet Branding. It's a re-release of a 1986 game originally published by Virgin Games and it's called Erebus. Here's a cover then and uh, usual Ricochet packaging. The, uh, the graphics not really giving much away about what the game is. Based on the front cover I'd say some kind of battle zone derivative with the sort of vector lines and the hills in the background who knows but well, we'll soon find out spines the usual sort of stuff pretty basic font on the logo there and then you look at the back cover and the screenshots and obviously it's not any kind of battle zone derivative looks like to be some kind of shoot em up possibly scrolling shoot em up uh, and the usual sort of derivative fend off the aliens kind of uh, text there Inside the packaging, uh, usual stuff, more bump about fending off the aliens and their noxious gases or whatever the hell that's going on about, uh, loading instructions, and inside we've got joysticks supported obviously, general instructions, Pretty much looks just like your normal sort of run of the mill space shooter to be honest. And we've got the foreign language stuff as is usual for these sort of releases and nothing on the back cover. Loving this loading screen, take a look at that, that's really atmospheric. Again doesn't seem to have any resemblance to the screenshots uh, but I like that. It's, it reminds me a bit of like Lord of the Rings kind of Mount Doom sort of thing going on there. Very cool. So here's the title screen, pretty nice looking one as well, the high score table, uh, the game's written by Steve Lee who did a, several games for Mastertronic or several games that ended up on Mastertronic at least, um, and the title tune's quite cool. So let's get on with the game. So the way the game works is that you're in control of your little ship, you can move backwards and forwards and you're actually on the ground so if you hit any of the solid objects on the ground you die. But any of the enemies can actually fly over you so that's kind of cool and you can shoot them. They do shoot projectiles at you as well, not too many to begin with. And the idea <coughs> is to roll along the landscape until all these little dots on the bottom right corner are coloured in green which means you've done a, a whole cycle of the sector and then a gate opens that sort of gives you a, a path to the next level which is this thing I'm just about to go past here so you don't have to shoot a certain number of um, enemies so you could stay on the level forever if you wanted and rack up a big score if you were chasing points uh, which I'm not for the purposes of this uh, demonstration there's an interesting throbbing noise made by the uh, ship, I suppose, that you're, fly that you're controlling. Uh, nice graphics of it rolling along the ground and nice uh, background graphics on this stage. The spaceships are a bit nondescript, really. Usual sort of stuff. And the explosions they make are a bit weak. Explosion sounds. Anyway, so it says in the middle of the screen out the ducts open, so I'm going to head over here. And based on past experience, for some reason, if you try and get into it from above, you just end up crashing. And the best way to get into it, on this level at least, is to just fly in there. So in I go. And this is now a bonus stage, and it lasts 30 seconds. And the idea is to get to the end of the stage. I think you get an extra life if you do that, although I've never actually managed it so far. The best approach just seems to be move up and down the screen and shoot a lot. So this is like a side-scrolling space shooter. 
pretty basic one. You can't move backwards and forwards, you can only move up and down. It's just unleash bullets, try and blast everything. I'm getting close to that to time limit now. Three seconds to go. Oh, I've done it. Cool. So I think you got an extra life there. So you go on to another level, and this is more of a steel-like level. A bit reminiscent of uh, Paradroid, this one. Or uh, Iridium, or even a mixture of the two, actually, with your little spinning robot thing. Oh, and I got shot. I was trying to get past that. The stuff at the top and bottom of the level on this one does kill you. So you've got to be really careful, and there's also these big objects in the middle. Oh, Christ. Shot again there. This is not going too well now. See if I can make some progress. It does get more difficult quite quickly. Although I have got a bit further than this level. There's the gate on this one. On this one you do have to go in from the top. You only learn that by trial and error, which is a bit annoying. The best approach is definitely just to scroll along and shoot frantically and try and blast everything. You can obviously reverse and try and shoot from behind as well. Oh, that was close. Right, the duct's now open, so try and get in there without getting killed. What happens when the duct opens is things start shooting at you more as well. Ooh. Right, so here it comes. See if we can get in there. Oh no! I've got another life. That was a disaster. It's not going at all well, this demonstration. Let's try and get in there again. There we go. Second time lucky. I didn't last too long in the bonus game that time round. Never mind. Now this level looks horrible. Bright pink and vile. And they say the Commodore 64 wasn't colourful. Oh, I think that's probably game over now. Yeah, so I got my name in the high score table. Uh, I did get a level further on last go, on my practice go. Um, but it's all pretty much the same as what you've just seen. Um, graphics and sound wise it's nice uh, nothing to complain about there it's a little bit frustrating smashing into the scenery from time to time but you've got to learn from your mistakes on that one and there is a certainly a, an addictive quality to it obviously the, the aim to get as high a score as possible so yeah not a bad game and uh, well worth the 199 I think